Well, that poor little grasshopper on my hood, he's gonna end up miles from home. <laughs> Lost his family. Gonna have to make new friends. Just heading back to the apple tree, guys. Uh, brought a big old box, and I'm gonna round up a whole bunch of apples this evening. And the wife and kids were supposed to come with me, but they went straight to the cottage, so that means I'm gonna be detecting for a couple hours out here. And I think Stan's already out here. Supposed to be, anyway. Ah, yeah, I just came over the hill, and I see Stan's van down there. So Stan's out here sweating like a madman. He's clearing all the brush around the tree so we can get at it and save it and get some apples. And I wanted to show you guys, this is the last find that he made the other day after I left. It's like a maybe a watch fob or something, but it's got a little native guy on there. Painted, very ornate, really cool. So shout out to Chicka Dee Dee who told me that these apples are yellow transparent apples. She gave me the name of them. And then I did a bit of research in Canada and some of the states, the northern states, they brought in Russian apples, cold climate apples. Uh, they had a program to bring these in for uh, all the immigrants and people moving uh, to Canada. And these apples were made um, to survive northern winters. And they're not commercial because they bruise very easily, but yellow transparents, so that's what they are. Stan says he's adopting this tree. He's going to trim all the branches down. He says it hasn't had any love in too long. I just want to figure out how to get those up there. I can reach these ones. Grandma said she's going to make us an apple pie. Here you go, Stan. As long as this branch doesn't break, I'll be okay. Yeah, there's no way I, I would break the branches if I tried to go any higher. Too long. The trees can left to go. It has to be brought back to stumpy and wide. There. Grandma should be able to make a pie or two with that. Okay. You can see it pretty good now, Stan. Good job. Yeah. Love the tree, buddy. Love the tree. Look at the colors over on the hill now. That's only been five days or so. All right, now we're at it. Let's get digging. Okay, there's the start to tonight's uh, hunt. Shell casing and some fine china. If you guys remember the ragweed that I crushed in the last video, two feet away, Stan just pulled a largie. <laughs> Jeez, I got the worst luck. So he's got a 1907, which is the key date, and he's got the H on the bottom. So that's a $25 largie right there. All right, I told Stan I'm calling it Largy. Son of a! That's the third time I've called Largy, and it's a brass buckle. Every time. This one I think still has a bit of the iron uh, cross piece in there. I just had Stan confirm it. That is a Mayan statue of Viracocha. Stan can confirm that he just got another Indian head penny. Another Indian head penny, and I got this trash. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so it's a Lincoln. It's not an Indian head, but it is a 1920, so that's pretty good. Nail. Come on, Equinox. You're going to let the Ace 400 beat you? For shame. All right, Universe, I'm learning my lesson. It's been 45 minutes. I'm going to call Brass Buckle. 
Ah, uh, neither. Pretty heavy. Dan said he found a new bracelet here, all the rage back in 1921. Stan's got another dog tag here, South Hemsworth, dog number 134 this time, and the same year, 1925. Surprisingly, that is our first horseshoe at this site. Down there, what, a foot? Yeah. So it's been an hour since his last largey. We went all the way down along the shoreline and made his way back up here. Where does he end up? Right beside my freaking ragweed again. And he pulls another largey. It's the horseshoe, Gary. I'm telling you. <laughs> okay? So you dug the first one right there. Right here. And then the second one right here. How did you miss? So I got to ask how you missed it. I don't know. I, I, you come out a different direction, buddy. Like well, I you guess. Talking about, just turn around and come another way. You, you do the honors. 1920. The last year they made largies. He was going to let me rub his horseshoe for good luck. A nominal fee, he said. <laughs> Found my own lucky bracelet, Stan. I don't need you and your horseshoe. Yeah, that sums up my night. A big question mark. Where are all the largies? Well, Stan's got some more goodies here. A copper spoon, salt and pepper top shaker there, and a bunch of brass whatchamacallits. Nice evening, though, eh? Beautiful evening. Sunset going down. Everybody better give Stan a big thank you for this video because I didn't find squat, so thank you, Stan. It's okay. I'll get you next time. <laughs> Don't I look beautiful in that setting sun glow? Thanks for joining us, guys. Didn't find a lot myself tonight, but Stan did fantastic. We'll catch you guys in the next video. I'm wrong. I scored big. I got a box of those delicious apples at the back of my vehicle. That's right. And we saved the tree. Bonus hunt. Good morning, everybody. I spent the night at uh, Family Cottage last night. It's a new cottage. Um, nobody's detected here. From the age of that garage, I'm guessing this place is 50s. I don't know the history here. Um, our main cottage is just, you know, five down the road kind of thing. We bought this last year. And there's a fair amount of lakefront down here that nobody has detected. I'm gonna do it this morning. It's pouring rain, so I don't know what we're gonna find, and I don't know how long this is gonna be, but I'm gonna do it. And just so you know, I think this place is haunted. Somehow last night, I heard the dog whining. Every time you go to let him out of the cage, he gives a little rrr, 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 like hello, and then he gets excited, and then he you let him out of the cage. Well, one o'clock in the morning last night, I'm wide awake, I'm listening to the wind, I hear the dog do his little whine, thump, thump, thump with his tail. Next thing I know, he's out of his cage. No idea. The detector needs a wash from out in the field last night anyway, so let's do this in the rain. And the best news I got was the mother-in-law is going to make Stan and I each a big apple pie out of those apples I picked yesterday, so perfect. There's a nice shot of the old garage and some of that beautiful Canadian color. It's still just starting, so, but it's starting to look pretty. This would be the perfect place for my six inch coil, which I don't have yet. To do that bush line in between the camps would be one spot. I think the father-in-law, he did a bunch of work here. I think he redid all of this. They took some trees down. I think he's uh, backfilled this just in the last year and a bit. I think the only original spot left is right down here at the lake. I can see it drops off 8 inches right here. And then the beach is down here. So I think this is the only strip that I'm going to maybe possibly find something old. You can see the division right there. So I'm going to do that strip. I wish I could present smell in these videos because right now it smells like fall. And that's my favorite time of year. My favorite smell. Eh, regular beach junk. So far, that's it. Look at that. Finally, real treasure. A penny. 1969. Didn't even have the decency to be an old one.
Oh, there's another one. 1969. A shore find. Well, there's a third one. 1964. So that's giving me a pretty good age for the property, I think. 60s. Well, a semi-clean detector and three pennies. A guy can't complain, I guess. Thanks for joining me. I'll catch you guys in the next video. Yeah, fall is here. <laughs> You know when your car is covered every morning and leaves, it's that time of year. <laughs>